So we're just kind of highlighting some of the moves in the public markets. Why do you think, I know you're a, a PE guy, but why do you think investors have continued to have confidence in this part of the market when we've seen so much volatility in just about everything else? Well, look, I think the, uh, the general world sentiment is that broadband is highly essential, right? And the, the need for faster and, and, and more ubiquity um, around broadband, it, it just hasn't slowed at all. Um, in addition, I think there's a lot of regulatory support for the expansion of, uh, of broadband, uh, certainly in the United States and really um, all over the world. And I think the perception is that it's an economic driver like no other. So it um, touches all aspects of our life. And um, I think there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of resilience there. So we got results from Microsoft and Meta. Meta especially really boosting its CapEx guidance. A lot of that money is going to be spent on data centers. Uh, data centers are an important part of your business. We were getting some conflicting reports after DeepSeek that maybe companies were pulling back on data center spending. It seems like we've kind of settled that with these two reports today. But give us a sense. When you're talking about data center investments with people, um, where do they want to put them? What's the focus? How much money do they want to spend? Are they going to be smaller, more localized? Are they going to be giant ones in the middle of the country? What are you hearing and seeing? Well, it's uh, it's somewhat all of the above, Frank. I mean, the the advent of uh, uh, AI has created this explosion of demand for data centers and, and compute power. Uh, but the drivers of uh, where it makes sense to actually build these data centers has a lot to do with the availability of uh, reliable and uh, uh, high quantity of electricity. So I think you know there's definitely no slowdown in the in the demand side of the equation. Uh, the real question is, how do you execute on the, the build-out plans? And again, that's driven a lot by uh, the, uh, the cost of electricity and, and its availability and, and reliability. Um, speaking of the availability of electricity and power, not only do you have your own PE firm, you're on the board of a number of uh, very notable companies. I'm talking Dell, the Southern Company, obviously a utility that provides energy to people, also New Fortress. Uh, what's going on with these companies? How, do you, how are they responding to tariffs and some of the uncertainty in the economy. I want to really lean on your experience because you touch so many other businesses in addition to your own. Well, notwithstanding the fact that I'm a board member, I don't really speak for these companies. But what I can tell you is that in general, there's a lot of uncertainty around the tariffs, right? And, um, you know, the, the primary concerns are what will the cost be? Um, how resilient are the supply chains? And what sort of impact does that have on the ability to continue to roll out and, and advance uh, your commercial enterprise? I think all the companies that you've mentioned uh, have to consider what the, what the right path is uh, for them. Um, but I think there's enough focus um, and experience in this space for, for all these companies that, uh, that they're going to make the right decisions and, and hopefully be able to weather through some of this choppy period. Well, of course, you know, the president marked his first 100 days in office of his second term this week. Um, I just want to kind of get a sense of this administration when it comes to their support for infrastructure. Of course, the previous administration, that infrastructure bill, but they didn't seem to have the same focus on a government and corporate partnership. What are you seeing under this administration, at least under these first 100 days? Well, look, I think the expectation has been met about lighter regulation when it comes to the advancement of this space. Um, so I think we have seen uh, uh, some of a some bit of a relax in terms of the ability to get deals done, uh, depending on what they are. Um, it appears to be a pretty pro-growth um, uh, stance that they're taking, um, and the viewpoint is that you know to have. Uh, secure and, and competitive networks uh, is a real advantage. Um, again, an economic driver like none other. And I think what's what's really interesting is that, you know, this is one area where both sides of the aisle are really in support uh, because of the, the impact it can have on uh, economic growth, uh, particularly down at the state level. Um, so I think, um, you know, so far so good. We're going to see how all things work out. There are a handful of things that really need to happen on the regulatory side. Um, particularly in one of the areas that we focus, which is uh, radio frequency spectrum. Um, and that is returning auction authority to the Federal Communications Commission. And then, of course, uh, uh, managing the reallocation of spectrum that's currently under government use uh, for commercial use. Mm -hmm. uh, that may take some time, but, uh, but I do think there's, there's a, a high degree of focus on it. So, David, we hit tariffs, but very quickly, I do have to ask you your reaction to uh, the news that the U.S. and China, they're officially engaging in trade talks. Listen, that's positive. Uh, 
I'll, I'll watch to see what happens the rest of the day and what happens tomorrow. Um, so, you know, there's been uh, quite a bit of change. Uh, so it's kind of hard to, to nail down exactly what we think is, is going to happen. Uh, but again, being prepared around managing the costs, um, managing the supply chain, um, and therefore what impact it'll have on capital expenditures um, is really the key focus.